One thing you just reminded me of is when, when we had the 9-11, the, uh, the terrorist attack, there were a lot of things that were implemented after that that still exist. You well, know, that's a different discussion. Basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's different, having. but uh, there's a different, diff- there are things that were implemented back then in terms of security, um, especially travel security and travel checks and things like that, and obviously um, a whole different spectrum of anti-terrorist research and everything. But as far as travel, they started implementing new methods for screening passengers and everything that has become commonplace now. I mean, before that, you didn't have to go through all these you know, uh, pat downs and basically x-ray scanners and everything that we do now, which is pretty common worldwide for any travel. Um, so what you think, even, like, uh, I remember you even, take your temperature every time you go to the airport for now. Well, pretty much. I mean, I'm thinking that now, in addition to the security things that we want, because I remember when the shoe bomber or something happened that they started asking people to take off their shoes before it wasn't something that you had to do. Right. That was added later on because of that, that thing that happened, that the guy had, that had a bomb in his shoe. So now everybody has to take their shoes and put the shoes also through the x-rays and all that stuff. So now with this health issue, we may have to go, you were talking about traveling, that people say, oh, I'm not going to get on a plane. Well, you may go on a plane and be perfectly safe. Maybe they have to allocate, start checking people, check your temperature. They put you in a little thermometer thing and say, okay, you have a fever. I know when I travel, I know people that are sick around me. I just try to stay away. I mean, obviously, it's not the virus, but uh, it'll be flu. It'll be something. You right, see people are sniffing. Oh, yeah, I mean, uh, it's very common. Lots of people get sick when they travel. Just because No, but no get sick when they travel. They travel already being sick. Like I've been or with- Or like, like I've been traveling not sick at all. And then I'm come in contact, whether it's at the airport or oh, yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah. And then I get sick basically after I travel. Yes, that yes, that's, that's even more common. But I'm talking about when you actually get on a plane right, and, and you are already sick. I have sick. a business trip scheduled. And then I'm that morning I wake up with a bit of a cold. It's like, okay, well, I'm just going to still right. go. I'm not gonna or or a my fever trip. or something. You say, okay, well, bad luck, whatever. I'm going to have to. Right. But nobody screens you for that. Right. Well, now they may start screening you for a fever and saying they put a little thermometer and you are with more than a certain number of degrees or about normal. They say, sorry, you can't travel. Yeah. Or, mm-hmm. you know, that, that kind of thing. I mean, who knows? That's the minimum effect. The yeah, other I, one. No, I know. That's the a other effect topic. is that they actually do a quick test that they call where they do a little yeah, prick. I don't take like that. Take your blood. I don't Well, well nobody d- likes anything. Yeah, but that's a. We're going to start taking people's blood when they go to the airport now i don't know what if what if it happens i mean will you stop traveling i mean it's just a health check i mean i will feel comfortable i mean no but that's how that's how invasion of privacy and yeah. all that stuff i understand they already make well, you go through x-ray scanners okay and patch well, you down all right so so let me let me ask you something when you do a tsa the transportation and safety authority or something they basically tsa check one day you have to go through all the whole thing and then you have the TSA pre-check, which basically allows you to be screened before. So you go through the fast pass type thing at the airport. They You, you submit all the information, the TSA uh, cross-references with FBI, some of the stuff, say, okay, this is a, a safe passenger. So you go fast and you don't have to do all the screening normal uh, process that everybody goes through. So now we can have a, for, forget about TSA, maybe it's part of TSA, but it will be the health SA or whatever where you have to go through a health check and commit to a certain health procedure so you get this and you get your health check ID or something. So you go through and they say, okay, this commits this. And you you voluntarily may say, yes, I I will submit myself to a check um, 24 hours before travel. I mean, would you like to be next to a guy that may have it? I mean, that's the thing. You say selfish for people to say, oh, I want to go out and I'm superhuman, I'm not going to have it, but maybe you, you're asymptomatic no. and you can no. give it to somebody I else. Mean, no, I mean, l- listen, look, it's always the debate of, it's, just, it's no different than TSA as it is now, where it's like you say, oh, it's an invasion of privacy that they x-ray you and pat you down and all that. But obviously, is that worth the trade-off of like, okay, well, what if someone brings a bomb on your plane? 
Well, exactly. So that's why they do it. There's arguments on both sides. Right. I mean, when I they were doing the full body scan, remember there was a lot of privacy issues and somebody see you naked. Honestly, my biggest problem that. with that isn't even the naked part. I don't really care that much about that. Is the fact that it literally gives you X-ray radiation and they yeah. make you do it. Yeah. And it's like, like if, you, if you travel ra randomly, it's not a big deal. But if you are a frequent traveler. Yeah, but if you're like traveling out. all the time and you're yes. going, that adds up. That radiation. it's not different that you go always doing X-rays in a doctor or in your mouth right. or whatever. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I don't have an answer. I mean, I know I don't they, either. Like, I don't think the government has it either. Obviously, I I am afraid that a lot of and a lot of people have said this, this isn't just my thought that uh, governments around the world are going to start using this to grab even more power, and just in the same way, you know, a lot of people have talked about basically that that there may need to be a uh, quote unquote Patriot Act that we had after 9 yeah. 11 for the coronavirus. And I certainly disagree. Yeah, I think that's a little too extreme. And, and that's something that we had in the US. I'm not sure each country probably had their own version of a Patriot Act or something. But I, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's every time you go to a crowded event, like you mentioned, and it could be sporting event, it could be um, arts, uh, festivals, whatever. Um, this has to be something that when you have a, like before coronavirus, you're sitting next to a person that is coughing or sneezing or whatever, and you're like, oh, whatever, you know, like kind of try to stay away or something. But now it's like you hear somebody coughing next to you and you're like, mm, you, you, you're more suspicious, you know? So either, either we develop this kind of um, herd immunity down the road where everybody's being over it and it's like, it's like, I don't know, like chicken pox or whatever. It's a, okay, yeah. Right, or there's a vaccine. Yeah, or there's a vaccine or something, you know. So, but in the meantime, I don't know how this will be affecting. Um, I, I'm not so concerned actually about, you know, like hotels and things. I think, I think hotels can get, um, they can adapt, you know, to, to travelers that are going to hotels with extra hygienic uh, measures and distancing and, obviously room cleanliness and all these things that make the traveler feel more confident. And when you go to a hotel, really it's like uh, like a home away from home. And you can, you know, you can ask, hey, what's the moment I come in here, don't don't touch my room. I'll, I'll make my own bed, whatever, you know. Uh, That's don't what I like doing. <laughs> yeah, I know. Don't change my sheets, nothing. I don't want anybody to come in. I mean, but hotels have a lot of things to to that they can do to to make make their guests feel comfortable that they are safe because they are also separated and you, you only mingle when you want to but if you want to stay in a hotel do work uh go to the pool play golf whatever all that stuff is not it's not going to affect you now traveling for example i personally don't like to travel just because i'm squeezed there with other passengers okay and all but that. what do you think they should do well i mean i i think I wouldn't be opposed to some kind of a uh, health check, to be honest. What does um, that mean? Like, okay, you go when you go to the airport, you gotta, we're gonna finger prick you and we're gonna test your blood for the coronavirus and these other fifteen. No, I don't drinks. think the airport is the place because it will be like super, super slow for. A few, I mean, right now TSA sometimes it's like huge lines just to go through all the whole security, but they may say we need you to go to a. Uh, Again, it's, it's part of the testing being available. And when the test becomes readily available, the quick test, um, then there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to get a test and have it certified or something and just go through a drive-through 24 hours earlier and say, okay, you have the antibody test or the uh, uh, immunity test, okay, whatever. What and then this? you have a test and then you have your certificate saying, L listen, if you, you travel internationally, like from Europe to, to the US, you have to have a basically uh, certificate of travel because there's no visas or anything, but they basically do a little background test and they, or check and they say, yeah, you're safe to travel. And that lasts for three years or what, something. What about this? What about uh, what Google's doing where they're helping the government basically yeah. track everybody in but all that's, of their movements? That's Do the you think tracing. that's okay? Uh, well, that's the tracing. Well, they, they don't track that you are, if, if somebody's confirmed to be sick, then they will tell you, hey, you've been exposed, you've been close to a person that was sick. So go check right, yourself. Right, but does now Google and the government have the right to just track everyone's movements at all times? No. I mean, they don't. I don't think they have the rights without permission. Uh, for my understanding... But they're doing it. Well... Because uh, before it used to be... 
uh, well, I'm not sure anonymously where, yes, Google obviously and all these services track your location, but they do it on an anonymous basis. Not that they're tracking you personally, right? That it's, they have a mega database that says basically you're just a number in the database basically. And then you get served ads or whatever, right? Cause that's their business model. Right. But now they're taking it to a different level where they're matching it to your identity. And now they're saying specifically, you well, and well, my, where did you My go? understanding is that at this point, it needs to be voluntary. Uh, it's not that they do it. You need to allow it. Yeah, yourself. but it's allowed by default. No. Well, I don't know if it's now implemented or not. I'm not familiar with that, but I know that I they've mean, been all looking of, into every, that. Every device you use tracks you by default. You have to yeah, turn it off. Track, they track... <clears throat> they don't track you, like you said, Manuel. They no, track. but that's the difference. <clears throat> now they're tracking you. you. No, they're not because you need to sign off on that. So, and that goes into constitutional rights and privacy and all that stuff. So you need to say, yes, I volunteer to be told if I'm close to a person that has tested positive or has been uh, uh, infected or something, so I know. And then when you do that, basically... Okay, so what if the new uh, modified Patriot Act says, uh, okay, well, now we're going to track you by your identity, and we have the right to do that. Yeah, that's a whole, that's a whole different... Um, Would you uh, agree with that? No, I mean, I don't want uh, people's liberties to be taken away, but, I, uh, but back to the travel situation that we're talking about, I don't think it's bad if um, TSA or whatever, just like now they do a background check, uh, then you need to be basically clean to be able to get on the plane but that's forever or just <coughs> for the next 18 months well until there's a solution i'm not sure that's what I, that's my concern that like like i said so do you think that they'll do that for 18 months and then just to stop well i don't know i don't know i don't think so but I that's once that they was, do that they never stop well that was my concern that after 9 11 they implemented certain meth certain security methods or security procedures before getting on a plane and those have been even uh expanded over time. So 9-11 was 2001, we're in 2020, almost 20 years later, we still have the same procedures that were implemented even more to have security when you get on a plane. So that set a new benchmark for travel by plane. Before you used to go to the airport half an hour earlier, check your luggage, get on the plane, check your passport, yes, it's you, you're good to go. Now it's a whole different thing. So I'm, I'm kind of concerned if now you have the security check and the health check. Now, whether the health check has, happens at the airport or if it's something that you had to do before. Like we're talking about the wristbands, the colors, that you are recovered or not recovered. Those are things that are really being right, but uh, being considered right now. Now, your freedom is that you say, okay, I'm not going to travel by plane. I'm just going right, to... Right, you always up. have the choice not to travel by plane. Right, right. But, so, so... But what... Okay, but my, my question is, okay, maybe we all agree, all right, for the next 12, 18 months until this is totally solved, maybe we agree to do that as a society. But then do you really think that after 18 months, no, they're going to stop? No, I mean, if, if this becomes a field of the past, just like flu. Yeah, but then the argument is going to be, I can already tell you the argument. The, the argument is going to be, okay, well, this was one virus, but we know that there's going to be more in the future. Well, there will be more. So we're going to do this indefinitely to prevent it. I think that will be a lame excuse to continue. I mean, people... <laughs> Yeah, it no, doesn't matter. No, because I I think I mean these viruses are again they they are they're gonna say I mean the arc if I'm playing devil's advocate right if I'm if I'm the government or the government that's very broad but basically if I'm trying to make the argument I basically will say well look at how fast this virus spread throughout the world because we had global travel even though we shut down travel from China pretty early it was it was already in Europe and then it came from Europe and came to the US and we have such global travel that it's just if unless you shut things down almost immediately it's hard to stop the no, spread but you so what we're going to do now is we're going to have these health checks forever and basically you're not allowed to travel if you're not passing these health checks that's the argument no i understand and it's for the I, good of the people no i understand but i think that's there's a lot of things in between. That's the that's the black, and you have the white, and there's a whole gray scale. And you may say, just like in defense. Yeah, but in if defense, I told you, hold on, hold on. But in defense, you have like from DEFCON one to DEFCON five. You don't go from war fine to basically war or the edge of war. You you have different levels. So if there's another 
uh, scare. But so if there's let's say that this happens again. Let me let me th make this argument. L let's say that this happens again in three years, and we have the same exact situation where there's a rumor that something came from China or from any other country, and there is spreading. Nobody listens to it. Whatever. Then you go into health, DEFCON one or two, and then you say, okay, now we have a a, pr a process or a procedure in place where we say, hey, there's a an alarm out there about this possibility. So for the next three months, we're going to implement this situation. So we catch it. We have a circuit breaker before it happens. Mm -hmm. And then if nothing happens, you're fine. If it indeed happens like this time, then you continue until it's over. And then if it's over, you take it off. You know, you, you, you implement these emergency procedures as needed, but you already have them in place. You don't have to improvise. You don't have to create them or anything. So you say, okay, well, if, if we already had this in place before and we heard in back in December, January, hey, this virus in China is growing and there's a lot of international travel. As we know, that a lot of people from China went from Iran to, to Italy to some places in Seattle and other stuff, and that's where it started spreading. And then we had those situations. Then we already implemented this. Just like we banned travel from China, or President Trump banned travel from China at the end of January, you can say, okay, for now on globally, every traveler is going to have to go through this extra security check or health check. Okay, so that's what I'm saying. Right. So you but think but you do it only when it's needed. Like, a, like again, but like how a, do you know when it's needed? Well, because, I mean, we have organizations that will be warning us. I oh, mean, yeah, we, that, they did a great job. Well, no, obviously they didn't, but we knew there was something. They just didn't know or didn't tell us how... Or, or, um, grave the situation was they didn't they even know themselves but okay, if, so then why do you rely on them well because the moment there's just an alarm you know it's like it happens in different situations of life i mean you can you can have a person breaking into your house and the cops come you have an alarm system and they check it out and maybe there's nothing it's a false alarm or maybe there's somebody in your house and then they have a whole different procedure so you can have a system in place where you say okay we're in a uh, DEFCON 1 or DEFCON 2 for this and we start implementing certain measures where everybody has to go with a mask. I don't know. I have a feeling that once those things get put into place that they're not going to stop doing them. Well, that's like something... Like if I had told you before 9-11 had happened that, hey, you're not going to be able to fly unless you go through these x-ray screenings, you would have said I was crazy. Before 9-11. Oh, before 9-11? Yeah. You yeah. would have said that's crazy. Of course. But in the same way that now if I tell you, oh, no, you have to pass a certain health check before you can fly anymore, you because, would say, because oh, they, you're crazy. they found a flaw in the system. I mean, you remember 9-11 was basically the okay, terror. Okay, but a flaw in the system is, hey, we check people for bombs, but we don't check them for a disease. Well, I mean... And really, the, the likelihood, I mean, if you look at it from a pure uh, logic standpoint, the likelihood someone has a bomb is pr very low compared to the likelihood someone is carrying a oh, disease. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and absolutely. And so they say, we should be Unfortunately, we live in a world where before... It was unheard of that, I mean, I remember flying and the captain door, the carpet was open. The captain would come out, hey, how are you folks doing, blah, 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 all that chatting and all that stuff. They were coming back and forth. Now they're like a vault. They close it and it's done. Why? Because the terrorists got into the cockpit, took over the plane, and then they flew into the World Trade Center. Nobody thought that people were going to do that. Now, these guys did it. And that's why they started implementing those procedures where, okay, what? Right, and nobody thought, so, or at least... People thought, but the, we weren't prepared for a virus that could spread so fast. I and, know. You know, we're fortunate in this case where the virus is as bad as it is, it's much less deadly than we've had other viruses in the past. And so what if next time, instead of the virus basically only killing old people, it just kills everybody? Then what do you do? Well, that's, that's the biological warfare that we've been discussing for a long time, too. I mean, like, there's the unique thing about this virus is that kids are fine. Normally, viruses kill old people and kids a lot and in this case well, it seems like most it kids doesn't kill the kids so much i mean there's some exceptions but uh, um they do spread it that's the yes issue. but they don't die like yeah. imagine if it because normally for when you look at viruses the people who are most at risk are young kids and older people mm -hmm. and in this case for whatever reason younger kids are normally fine like the death rate's very low luckily and that's great but it's, that's not the usual case. Could you imagine if it was the same exact spread, but instead of just old people dying, it was also kids six and under were dying at the same rate where you have like 20% of them dying, like you have people in their 80s? That would be a global catastrophe. Yeah, I mean, any, yeah. 
I mean, right and now, we're fortunate. The, old, and, the eldest of the elderly are, are more risk. And on, so, but the argument could be, we are actually lucky that, yes, while it's super contagious, it's not that deadly compared to a lot of other viruses that could have been much more deadly. Yeah. And they say, we need to put all these precautions in place. And so now you're not allowed to fly unless you pass a health check. Yeah. So, so again, I mean, let's, uh, I, I just tried to anticipate what will happen. I mean, when, I think when it's going to happen. When and you I don't agree with it, but when I think you it's reopen, happen. When you reopen the economy, I mean, countries are going to have... I mean,